This lecture is going to be about how to use power and heat equations. Because power is a change in energy over time, and heat is a change in energy, we can rewrite the power equation for this unit as power is equal to heat over time. This allows us to connect what we know about heat to time, so we can determine how long it will take to heat and cool materials. Rearranging that equation gets me time equals heat over power. As an example, we could say a constant power supply of 5,000 watts is used to heat a 10 kilogram block of ice at its melting point. Using the table of information for water, determine how long it will take to completely melt the ice. Because this is changing phase, we're going to use Q equals M times L. And I know that the power is 5,000 watts. The mass is 10 kilograms. The latent heat of fusion for water is 3.3 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram. And we're using fusion because we're going from solid to liquid and we're trying to find the time. So I know that power is equal to heat divided by time, so that means that time is equal to heat divided by power, and I can rewrite that equation replacing Q with M times L. So now I have what I'm looking for, T, and everything I have, M and L and P, so I can just plug those into my equation and find that it would take 660 seconds for a power supply of 5,000 watts to completely melt 10 kilograms of ice at its melting point into water. Example number two is asking how much power would be required to heat 20 kilograms of water from 10 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius in five minutes. So this is a change in temperature, so we're going to use Q equals MC delta T. I know that the mass is 20 kilograms. The change in temperature is positive 20 degrees Celsius. The specific heat of water is 4.2 times 10 to the third joules per kilogram degree Celsius. And the time is five minutes, which I can show is equal to 300 seconds. So the power is equal to the heat over the time, replacing heat with MC delta T, and plugging those numbers in, gets me 5,600 watts of power to change the temperature of 20 kilograms of water by 20 degrees Celsius. In example number three, a stove provides 2,000 watts to 10 kilograms of water initially at 20 degrees Celsius. How much time would it take to completely evaporate the water? The water is changing temperature and then phase, so we need to use Q equals MC delta T and then Q equals ML. I'll start by solving for the time it takes the water to reach its boiling point. The mass is 10 kilograms, and we're trying to get it up to 100 degrees Celsius. That's the boiling point of water according to my table on the right. So that means the change in temperature is positive 80 degrees Celsius. And the specific heat of water is 4.2 times 10 to the third joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. And the power is 2,000 watts. So plugging this into my equation, knowing that Q is equal to MC delta T, gets me a time to reach the boiling point of 1,680 seconds. Now I need to find the time required for the water to change its phase. The mass is 10 kilograms. I know that we're working with the latent heat of vaporization because we're going from liquid to gas. So that's going to be 2.3 times 10 to the sixth joules per kilogram. The power is 2,000 watts. So again, plugging this in, knowing that Q is equal to M times the latent heat of vaporization. Plugging that in gets me 11,500 seconds. So the total time is going to be 1,680 seconds plus 11,500 seconds, which is equal to 13,180 seconds. So those are three examples of how you can use the power equation to calculate power and time when you're working with heat.